everyone. And we're recording. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Sam. And I'm Mason. And you know it's good when it starts with Right Company. Right Company. company. And you know what it does when we fuck it up. So. <laughs> it's not my fault. I have really shitty internet, so I'm a little bit behind you. And so when I think that you're starting, I'm trying to guess, and it just gets the whole thing thrown off. Oh, okay. We'll have to plan this. Maybe when we actually do this in person, we can do it right. One day. We'll have to just record, like, one time we do it right, and just, like, somehow edit that into the beginning of each episode. Even though neither of us know how to fucking edit anything. I was going to say, that sounds like that requires skills that we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should know. I did have to make student films, but, like, I don't want to get the programs. They're expensive, so. I understand. Yeah. Anyways, today we are reviewing Dark Blue Dark Blue Kiss! Which, this was, this was a weird one. Expound um, on that. So, uh, when I first watched Dark Blue Kiss, I mean, it's not like a, it's not an old show. It's still pretty new, actually. Um, mm -hmm. It ended roughly like six months ago. Um, I don't know. The first time I watched it, I was like, I like this. I don't love this. This is okay. I don't know if I understand the hype. But as time went on, I kind of thought about it more. And I was like, something about this show is sitting right in my spirit. So I really wanted us to rewatch it. So I rewatched it this week, and I think this might be the highest rated show that we've done so far. Like, I don't know what happened, but during the rewatch, I was like, wait, this shit's really good. <laughs> I just want to say, I know exactly what happened, and I'm so glad you brought this up. This came on concurrently with Tharn Type. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Because... I feel like this ended around the same time Tharn Type did, and it was like, I was always so excited for Tharn Type, and I was never like super excited for a new Dark Blue Kiss episode. So when it was on, I was like, but I like Tharn Type more. But I'm like, I don't know. I think this might be like, in terms of story, a technically better show, like if we were to break it down. Um, but yeah, it came around the same time as Tharn Type, so. Yeah. Timing is everything when it comes to boys love. Like, honestly, Together, if it wasn't for quarantine, I really think that Together would have struggled to be what it has become. I don't think it would have been unpopular because Bright and Wynn obviously did what they needed to do in terms of being beautiful. But I don't think that it would have had the numbers it had if everyone wasn't at home. And I think Dark Blue Kiss suffered from kind of the opposite syndrome. Tharn type was such a shock to like the general boys love system. Right. Because usually when you have a show that has a lot of skinship and stuff like that, those are shows that are maybe done through less popular outlets. They don't have authors that are as popular. And Tharn type really took it there with an author who already had massive success with Love by Chance. Right. And so Dark Blue Kiss is not a skinship show no. at all. Mm -mm. And so you put something that is kind of, I won't say cerebral, but definitely more about life against something that's more sensational. And people are always going to go for the sizzle rather than the sauce. Yeah. So I guess it's plot synopsis time. Shall I or shall you? Um, I feel like I always make you do it, but you're much better at explaining things than I am. <laughs> Would you like to do it again? <laughs> I'll try my best. Okay. I believe okay. you. Fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dark Blue Kiss is the third in a trilogy of Kiss series shows. There was first Kiss the Series, then there was Kiss Me Again, and then there was Dark Blue Kiss. And so the couple that we're seeing here, Pete and Cal, they have three series worth of history, even though I don't think they played a big role in Kiss the Series. Well, we take up in their last year of college, 
they are a couple that has been going out for a while and there's some issues going on with them as a couple number one pete's kind of lost in terms of his future he doesn't really know what he wants to do or where he wants to go and his dad is a very wealthy man with his own business and kind of hangs out in a group of other wealthy businessmen who all have sons that are doing big things and pete is kind of I wouldn't say the fuck up, but he's kind of the disappointing son of the group. So he's got a lot of pressure family wise to kind of have that achievement. And he doesn't really want that pressure. He wants to be allowed to kind of live his life how he wants to live it, even if he doesn't know what that means. Um, and then you have Cal, who is the epitome of a filial son. Like his mother depends on him to help take care of the household because his father is gone. Um, I don't know if his father died or left the family, but his father's just not in the picture. He's got a sister who's going to school overseas, which is very expensive. Um, and so he's tutoring and doing what he can to secure a good future for his family so his mother doesn't have to work as hard and so that his sister can achieve her educational dreams. Mm -hmm. And it makes it to where it's kind of a complicated relationship between the two because Cal is tasked to take on tutoring the son of the director of the school that his mother works at. And Pete, you know, a lot of his problems are very internal, whereas a lot of Cal's problems are very external. It's life situation, whereas Pete, it's all about, you know, I want to be me, but what does me mean? And so there's a conflict in that Pete doesn't really understand the kind of external pressure that Cal is under. And he asked Cal to not tutor the son of the director because Pete has kind of a beef with this kid because this kid's an asshole. And Cal lies about it and says, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop tutoring him. But he does it anyway, because he feels like by doing this, he's bringing money into the household. He's assuring his mom's going to get a promotion, all these benefits to his family by doing this. Well, it gets found out that he is tutoring the young man and then Cal and Pete break up. And then there's a lot of drama about them getting back together. Um, and also this young man is literally the devil. So, I mean, there's that. Then the second sub story is Sun and Mork. So Sun is a coffee shop owner. He lives in the coffee shop with his brother Rain. And Sun is just like one of those really serious, strict by the book type of guys. And Rain, his brother, is just kind of like a dude, you know, just a <laughs> younger brother, a dude. And he's friends with a guy named Mork. Mork is everything. Everything. Mork is fine. He's kind of a bad boy, but he's, you know, I would, I don't want to say heart of gold is what it is. It's just like, he's tender underneath his hard shell. I think that's more appropriate. Mm -hmm. And Sun doesn't like Mork because Mork has an ability to do something that I don't think Sun can do, which is Sun knows what the right thing is to do. Mork feels what the right thing is to do. And so these two kind of butt heads because of their different approaches to life, even though they are very similar people. Also, Sun is very cognizant of his gayness. He's been out for a while. Um, however, Mork is not out and he's a little bit conflicted because he's not sure if this person who he's had kind of an antagonistic relationship with is the person he wants to get into an open gay relationship with. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of their storyline is about misunderstandings, lack of communication, lack of seeing things through the uh, seeing things through the other person's point of view, and more so on the part of Sun than on Mork. Mork is extremely understanding throughout this series, whereas Sun, he's just, you know, he's so set on following the rules that he doesn't understand when maybe the rules are wrong. So Sun definitely has some tunnel vision. Yeah. So that's the storyline. And then there's some side characters. There's Sandy, who's the only female in the Pete Cal friendship group. There's Rain and his uh, love for Manal, also known as Lemon. Um, there's other ancillary characters. There's great moms and dads. There's terrible dads. And then we have like one queen from YYY who's in this show. She goes by Kitty. And so lots of good things going on in the show. But the plot line, I would have to say, definitely has to do with communication and seeing the story from the other person's point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so Mason, tell me why it is that your opinion of this show seems to have grown in positivity so much over the last six months. <clears throat> I think part of it's because I took the time to really pay attention the second rewatch. Um, like I really paid attention to 
all the dialogue, everything that was going on, any little like plants that they were leading up to a reveal later. And I also think that what made me think about it over the last six months was some of the realistic moments that it hits. One of the moments that I have a hard, kind of a hard time watching this scene, but it's an important scene. It's a scene where um, Cow comes out to his mom. That scene really hits home. I don't know if I like that it hits home in the way that it does, but the dialogue is great for that scene, but I really need to give props to um, New, the actor for Cow, because there was a, there was a moment where they're sitting on his bed, him and his mom, and the mom goes, you like men, don't you? And the way his face twists, I was like, that's the face. That's the face when you're coming out. I don't know how he got it. And I was like, I don't know. It like hit my soul and I was like, I gotta not watch this for a few minutes. But like, it was realistic scenes like that that just kept me thinking like, that was good. That was a good moment. And they built up to it well. So when it happened, it felt like natural. Um, another thing that made me think of it was just, I really liked Sun and Mork. And so every now and then I'd be like, they were such a cute couple. I'd love to see them again, but I can't because they don't have a show. So I guess I'll have to watch Dark Blue Kiss again. So, yeah. I don't know if they'll ever have a show, but if they don't have a show, I would love to see them be considered for another series where they play very different characters. There's a show that is in the works called Manner of Death. Uh -huh. And it's like a detective and a forensic analyst mm -hmm. work together to do stuff and they fall in love. And I could definitely see those two in that series because they yeah. have a more mature look than a lot of the boys that you see in Boys Love, especially Sun. Sun looks like he's absolutely in his mid to late 20s. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be considered for that. That would be nice. I I don't think so, just because um, the guy who plays Sun is going to be in another Boys Love as the lead couple next year. Um, just announced it. Uh, Top Tap's going to be in it too, um, but Are Sun is going to play the main couple. Those Are they two, the no. Oh, <laughs> damn! Sorry to get your hopes up. Um, no, Top Tap is the B couple, and then. Son will be in the A couple, but he's not paired up with Mark. He's paired up with someone different. Um, so I think our I think our hopes for that are a little dashed. But Whoa! you know, I can still you know we can still dream. Crazier things have happened. So okay, so <laughs> I I think that one of the things that I loved from the first time I saw the show and I talked about. I actually have an entire review for this series on my Shallow 360 channel. I filmed it on January the 1st of 2020 because something's wrong with me. But I think what I like the most about this show is the way it talks about sustained relationships. One of the things that is so popular in Boys Love is how they got together. You know, whether the trope is friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, strangers that are bound by some weird coincidence or, you know, past lives, no matter what the trope is, it's always about the getting together. This show very much is about the ties that bind. What is it that keeps us together? What are the things that drive couples apart after they've gotten together? Mm -hmm. And also like, one of the things that makes this probably the most realistic GMM series that they've ever done regarding gay couples are the conversations that Pete and Cal have about what it means to be a gay man. Mm -hmm. Like there's a conversation they have at the pool where Cal is like, you know, you need to decide what you want to do because your dad is relying on you to be a good image for him. And, you know, we're almost about to graduate. So you need to figure out your path. And Pete is like, you know, okay, if I want to do something with my life, that's on me. I don't need to be a big success or do big things to prove that my dad's gay son is worthy of respect. As mm -hmm. a gay person, I don't think I have to be more than a straight person in order to justify my existence. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation that is never had in mainstream BL. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of time in mainstream BL, it's, I don't like men, I only like you. Yeah. Which is fucking hogwash. Uh -huh. uh, 
Whereas, you know, Pete's like, yeah, I'm gay and, Mm -hmm. and, and that's just, that's just it. And it's so nice to see him so upfront about it and to see Cal kind of come around to his way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, Pete telling him, your mother loves you. Cause they have a moment in Pete's bedroom or Cal's bedroom where Cal's like, you know, these are the reasons why I don't want to tell my mom that I'm gay. I don't want to disappoint her. I don't want to disappoint the people who know her. I don't want her to be ashamed of me. And Pete's like, you know, your mother loves you. She'll always love you. And in her heart of hearts, she just wants you to be happy. And this is not something that necessarily is going to be a source of unhappiness for her and shouldn't be a source of unhappiness for you. And I just, those conversations are so, they're so few and far between in boys love that when you finally see it, it just hits Mm -hmm. because you've been waiting for those conversations to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really weird in a lot of ways that Thorn Type and Dark Blue Kiss came on at the same period of time because Thorn Type had a very upfront character about his being gay. Like he starts to show like, I'm gay, I'm entitled to be here. If you've got a problem with me being gay, you need to get out. Mm-hmm. And you have another character kind of coping with his, I hate gay people, but I like you and you know, going there but the thing that never happens in thorn type that totally happens in dark blue kiss is that after type acknowledges he wants to be thorn's boyfriend he's going to be in a relationship with thorn that still never changes his opinion about gay people or his own sexuality as far as he's concerned he's still a straight man who likes one gay man Mm -hmm. and in dark blue kiss you have two characters who in previous series that I haven't watched dated women who are in this series saying we are gay men Mm -hmm. and then coping with the ever after of that. So I don't know. Dark blue kiss just very much hits differently. Yeah. It hits in a very honest and subtle way. Yeah. Even though I still think that in real life, this is a couple that I would desperately yearn to see break up. I don't. Yes. I don't like Pete and Cal as a couple. Uh, I think they're cute. I think I have to he needs say, to um, reel it in a bit. But overall. Yeah, and, and that's why I don't like them as a couple. Um, so Pete, I have to say the writers are very good about keeping their characters consistent. Pete never acts out of character. Cal never acts out of character. Where they were at the beginning of the show is absolutely where they sit at the end of the show. But Pete is very Mm self-centered and he just seems to not have a capability of sitting in somebody else's shoes until like the worst thing has happened like he doesn't get the cow had been telling him the whole time my reputation means everything helping my mom means everything everything is riding on me being able to do certain things and pete never gets it until cow is embroiled in the rape scandal and then all of a sudden Pete understands and I just personally don't think I could be with somebody who is that kind of tunnel vision narrow-minded unable to have empathy for me in my life Mm. and that's the reason why like personally I don't like them as a couple also Cal lied to Pete Mm -hmm. because he wanted to make Pete happy And you can't tell lies to your loved one to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. If you can't be honest with your loved one and your loved one can't understand the position you're in, then maybe you need to take a real hard look at your relationship. But telling lies to get by doesn't serve anyone in the end. And it is the source of their big blow up. And so like Cal needs to not only learn to have a backbone, but Cal needs to learn that real lasting relationships require a level of honesty that goes past the comfort level you might want to maintain. And that's the reason why I don't like these two together as a real life couple. I get that, but I do think the show does a good job of both of the characters, they have that fight, and coming out of it with a different understanding of each other, a better understanding, and what seems like a better relationship. So I can see I that. Like, I feel like I could see them breaking it up completely and just being like, Cal being like, listen, 
you know, I tried to, because Sandy even brought this up to Pete. She was like, you know, why won't you talk to Cal? And Pete's like, oh, I don't want to talk to him, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, maybe he doesn't want to talk to you too, because when you do, you act like this. You act like a fucking brat. And Pete's mm -hmm. like, ugh. And she goes, I mean, are you doing, are you, you know, not talking to him? Are you being angry, you know, because you're hurt or to teach him a lesson? And she fully calls him out on that too. She's like, you're being a brat and I don't know what the fuck you're doing this for. Um, and I think it's not fair to Cow. I, I mostly think the relationship is unfair to Cow because Pete is immature and selfish. And therefore when Cow does be like, hey, this is very important because my mom needs to keep her job and I need the money too. I have to tutor this kid, even if he was a douche to you. I gotta tutor him, it's once a week, get over it, you know? Mm -hmm. So if Cal's gonna blow up at him for that, that's really, or if Pete's gonna blow up at him for that, that's really on Pete. But I think they do a good job of when they do reconcile, it's like, okay, they care for each other. Pete has seemingly come around to the fact that what he did was wrong, but Cal was also like, yeah, I shouldn't have lied to you. And going forward, let's not do that again. So, yeah. I buy it at the I end. Know. I buy it at the I end. Just, I just wonder if they actually learned their lesson because everything that Pete wanted, Pete got in the end. Cal really didn't get much of anything in the end. You know, Cal ends up moving into Pete's house. Pete had said early on, let me take care of you. And that's absolutely what he ends up doing. You know, uh, I think that Cal ended up working at Pete's dad's business as an intern because he didn't get the internship he wanted. whereas Pete got the internship at T-Power. Right. So, you know, it feels like a very uneven relationship to me. And I just, I, I don't ship it. I really don't ship it. But at the same time, I'm glad that this show was made mm -hmm. because not every relationship is a relationship that maybe you would personally want to be in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good to have these relationships that kind of look a little bit lopsided and work themselves out because, well, that's not a relationship I would want to be in. There are people who are literally in that relationship. And maybe this serves as a good navigational device for them to try to figure out what's going on with their own. Right. So for that reason alone, like, I don't like this couple together, but I'm glad to see this couple portrayed. That's fair. I do like Sun Mork, but they're another couple that I feel like I kind of want to see them break up as well. I either want to see a show where it's um, either they break up. I don't. I mean, I don't. I, I wouldn't want to watch a show where they actually break up. Like, I think that would be unfun to watch. Mm -hmm. But I would like a show where we get like a sequel where it's them running the coffee shop, and you know, Sun learns to not be such a nag, you know, and just like fucking relax. <laughs> right. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Sun can be a lot. It's a little cringy. Yes. I think definitely with Sun, I, I can understand where he's coming from because his father didn't have faith in him when it came to this coffee shop. He's trying really hard to kind of do the thing that Pete doesn't want to do, to prove himself worthy, even though he's a gay man kind of out on his own. Mm -hmm. And Mork, on the other hand, is just like, he's just living life. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, he's just out here living. And Sun having this kind of, like you said, tunnel vision idea of what life is supposed to be like and how things are supposed to work out. If he doesn't learn how to be flexible, I don't know how their relationship can keep happening. Because even at the end of the show, when they're together, he's very overbearing. Like at the birthday party, that was uncomfortable to watch. I hate that scene because I hate any type of public um, proposal, confession. I don't like it. I don't think anyone should do it. It's very weird. It feels like peer pressure for Mork to say yes. I don't think that's necessarily how it came off, but like in real life, it would have come across that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they did a good job of Mork being like, like Mork has definitely more than once stood his ground. So... I think if he truly wanted to say no, he would have, even in front of everyone. But I think the scene that I dislike the most at the birthday party is there's a scene where they're setting up the birthday party and Mork is outside playing Pokemon Go and he bumps into this girl and the girl's like, oh, hey, you know, I'm 
Manal's friend. I got invited to this party. Uh, so, yeah. And then they're both playing Pokemon Go. And they're like, oh, we're on the same team. Let's go take down the gym a block away. And then Sun comes out and is like, no, 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 no. The party's going to start at some point. And Mork's like, but no one's here yet. It hasn't officially started yet. Why can't I take a few minutes to go do this? And Sun's like, no, you can't. And it's like, it's his birthday. Let him fucking play Pokemon Go if he wants to. Like, I do understand that Sun had set up this birthday party and people were coming. But if no one's there yet and the start time wasn't for another 30 minutes to an hour, just let him fucking play Pokemon Go. Who gives a shit? What's yeah, just say, like, around? I'll call you when it's time to come through. I'll call you 15 minutes before we start. That's yeah. a very easy thing to do. And it's like, Sun is almost Mork's dad rather than Mork's lover. Mm -hmm. And the power balance there, I, I'm not super comfortable with. Like, even when Mork is like, I don't want to sleep with you tonight. I'm going to go sleep in your brother's room. And then Sun's like, well, then I'm sleeping in my brother's room too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, sometimes people need space. Mm -hmm. Lay off a bit. But Mork, out of every character in the show, to me feels like the most self-actualized. Like, he seems more than anybody. Like, he's very sure of himself. He's kind of, even if he doesn't know what he wants to do as a career in the future, he knows what he likes and what he doesn't like. He has a very strong sense of, like, right and wrong. His moral compass is very, very clear. And yeah. I don't know. I just wanted to see th good things happen to him. And I think the thing that he needs, if there was going to be a series moving forward, he needs to learn how to allow someone to take care of him. He seems like the kind of person that is, it's very important to him to take care of the people that he loves and he's very self-reliant. And I don't know if it's because in the past when he relied on somebody, they let him down, mm -hmm. but I would love to see him kind of feel more comfortable to allow someone to take care of him, do things for him, maybe not necessarily take take over his life, like that kind of thing, the way that Sun mm -hmm. wants to do, but definitely feel more comfortable of being able to reach out when you need help. And he seems like he can't do that. Yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be a great season for them. We can call it Coffee Kiss. And Yay! it's Sun and Mork. <laughs> and <laughs> Sun needs to learn to um, back off. And Mork needs to learn to do as you said, let others take care of him a bit. And they need yeah. to like meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah, I think that's what I want from them the most. Um, but I really liked Mork. I liked just about everything Mork did. The times that Mork would get yelled at by Sun, I would be thinking the same thing, like, why are you yelling at him? He didn't do anything wrong. I think the worst example of it, and the part that just infuriated me so much, is when the thugs break into the coffee shop. The fact that Sun shows up to the hospital where he sees his brother sitting on the side of a bed where Mork is in the bed. So obviously Mork is more injured than Rain. Mm -hmm. And he comes in there just to yell at him, like, look what you did to my shop, and I told you not to fight. And all. It's like, first of all, no one wants to be visited in the hospital by somebody yelling at them, straight up and down. But secondly, like, do you not see what condition your brother is in compared to this man? Does it not kind of make sense to you that maybe this was a targeted attack? It wasn't just random fighting happening? Right. It just, it really just, he seems like he's so oblivious to like the root causes of things. Even when they got in the fight, when they were looking for the coffee beans, Mork never started that fight. He did it. Mm -hmm. So why does he have to be chastised? Are you just gonna let somebody whoop your ass because it's wrong to fight? No. Yeah. So I thought that, that scene in the hospital, I wanted them to break up right then and there. I wanted them to never get back together. I was so pissed. That was definitely a very annoying plot contrivance because I'm going to assume that Rain is the one that called Sun. And I don't know why Rain didn't, when he called, be like, hey, we're in the hospital. Here's what happened. Instead of, he should have said, like, here's what happened. These guys came, you know, they were beating us up. Mork didn't do anything. He held back. He didn't throw any punches. He got beat up pretty bad. If he had said that, then there would have been no reason for Sun to have been angry. But he didn't. He made it seem like whatever he told Sun made it seem like Mork had fought back and broken their promise, you know? 
which yeah. is just like a dumb plot contrivance. I wish they didn't do it, but you need conflict between them at the second act, in the third act, so, okay. I feel like they could. it could have been something else. Also, can we talk about how Rain is the best brother? There, this show has some of the best family members I've ever seen in any boy's love. The best dad, the best brother, the best mom. Like, Absolutely. they're perfect. Yeah. Um, I love Rain. Um, he even does that one, like, stupid childish thing where he hides the, like, so Manal likes Mork and makes him a cupcake with hearts on it. And, like, Rain, like, threw it away or something. Or, like, he didn't give it to Mork. And, you know, that was, like, very selfish and dumb of him. But like, you know, get over it. It's fine. He's, you know, people do dumb things sometimes. So that's forgivable. But then the rest of the series, he spends just being like very supportive of both Rain and Mork, but really backing Mork up when it counts, like against his own brother. He really backed Mork up when he needed to. And I really appreciate him for that. And then um, Pete's dad is an MVP. We love him. He gets it. He was like, oh, you're dating a guy? Okay, you need a condom? Here's a condom. You know, oh, you guys are having um, fighting? Here's some life advice for when you're fighting because this is universal. It doesn't need, matter if it's a boy or a girl or those that lie betwixt. It's anyone. If you're fighting with someone, here's how to solve it. And then at the end, the mom, Kyle's mom is like, what are we going to tell our friends and family now that they're openly out? And, um, Pete's dad, who's like a wealthy businessman with lots of connections, is like, we just tell him the truth. It's, it's whatever. We'll deal with it. I love my kid more than I care about these yahoos. And it's like, <laughs> my family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, just, he's so great. He's so great. And he's, he's the character that you always want to see. I mean, he probably is not very realistic in a lot of ways, but it doesn't yeah. matter because we need him. Uh, I especially love that scene where it's the last episode and Cow is running to reconcile with Pete and he runs to the house and he's like, is Pete here? And the dad's like, nope, and I can't tell you where he is. So then he types in his phone where he is. He goes, I didn't tell you, I texted you. And it's like, <laughs> we love you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's so sweet. He's so sweet. And he lets them live in his house. Like, you mm -hmm. know, no shade. But my mom wouldn't have let my boyfriend move into our house. Yeah. You know, like, at least not when I was young. Like, at this yeah. age, yes, but back when I was younger, no way. Yeah. So, I mean, his dad is, like, uber supportive. But, like, Cal's mom, she definitely is the mother that her son needed. Yeah, I think she did a very good job of, like, she definitely knew that they were dating because they were not fucking hiding it well, you know? But she let, she only really confronted him about it, like, officially when she kind of had to, you know? Like, when the rape scandal thing happened, she kind of had to say something to him about it. But beforehand, she would drop hints like, do you have anything to tell me? Which... I think it's nice of her, but also I hate when my parents do that. Like, <laughs> I hate it. So if you're a parent, um, I feel like there's other ways to show support for the LGBTQ community that isn't like dropping hints that you know. Because I think dropping hints that you know is very uncomfortable. Like it honestly makes me uncomfortable when my parents like drop hints. I'm like, you don't need to know. As a parent, I will just tell you this. Mm -hmm. It is very frustrating when you know your child is dealing with something and they don't feel comfortable to tell you, especially mm -hmm. if you and your child have a decent relationship. Like I think about my own daughter. We have a really decent relationship. I think people have seen our relationship and you know, we're close, mm -hmm. but at the same time, she has a lot of things that she's not comfortable with telling me. And a lot of it has to do with just, you know, being a teenager and being embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But other things are just like, you know, your mom can't be your only friend. And I get that. But it's very frustrating because this is your child. And, you know, especially if you're a mother, this is somebody who came literally out of your body. Mm -hmm. And so you want to protect them the best way you can. You want to help them the most that you can. You want to fix the world for them. And it's very hard to sit on your hands 
and keep your mouth shut when you know your child needs something from you and trying to wait for them to tell you in their own time, you get nervous because you're like, okay, now it's starting to get out of hand. Okay, now it's starting to get dangerous. Please tell me. I'm getting to where yeah. I can't wait anymore. Please have this conversation with me because I've been dying to talk to you and, and just guide you on this. So I understand where his mother's coming from, and I know it's uncomfortable for the kid, but for the mother, like, that's her son. He came from her, literally. And mm -hmm. to see him going through everything he's going through and not wanting to reach out for support, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You know, and for it to get to this point, I'm sure she's like, you know, I'm not saying that you could have avoided this, but if you had talked to me about it, I would have explained to the director that, you know, you don't have time to tutor his son anymore, that, mm -hmm. you know, you're about to gear up for your internship. I could have helped you, and now we're here, and I don't know if I can get you out now. It might be a little bit too late. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. That's my, that's my parent rant. <laughs> that's okay. It still makes you uncomfortable, but, like, I get your side. Okay. Um, this is just a side note. I just want to say it before I forget it. Did you notice that for some reason they kept using the fucking Sound of Wind or Colors of the Wind song in the soundtrack or at like least a very close replica? Like there'd be times when they did it a lot with Sun and Mork when they'd have like a romantic thing and you'd hear like the first few strings of like fucking Pocahontas Colors of the Wind. Did you notice that? No, I didn't, and I tried to listen for it, but I didn't notice it, but that's bizarre. I kept hearing it, and I was like, I just, the whole time it happened, it made me giggle, and then I just kept waiting for, like, Mork to turn to camera and go, how high can I grow? And I'm like, oh my god, just, just fucking burst into song already. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so now's the time we have to talk about the person we've been actively avoiding talking about. Mm. Non. That little bitch. So, I will say, the show does a good job of establishing Non's home life not being good, and not as necessarily an excuse for his actions, but to explain why he is the way he is. So, I think the show did a very good job of showing that the dad's a fucking shithead, too. Um... I felt really bad for Nan. There's a scene, so Nan's the antagonist of the show. There's a scene where Nan is about to enter his dad's office, but his dad is having a conversation with the head of the cheerleading department. And the head of cheerleading department was asking for more money because they had brought trophies and prestige to the school. And the dad basically said, um, no money for you and your fags. Like, he basically said that. Um, he was like, you guys are too obvious. I don't like this. You need to tone it down so you and your fags can get out. And Nan was like, oh, yikes. So I fell for him there, but Nan was a shit, and he actively tried to break up Pete and Cow, and it worked. And he just, he also, like, spun a tale to his dad that made Cow seem like a sexual predator which is really bad and like you should always believe the victim, you know? But like this was like the one case where it was like, one of the few cases where it was like the person was lying and it really hurt someone, you know? And it was such a useless lie. Like I get that you don't wanna get in trouble for going out and drinking. I understand that. But to, to, to weigh two things in your head, I can either spin the tail that I was about to be raped and that maybe he drugged me uh -huh. or I could just be like, dad, I got drunk and he helped me come home. Mm -hmm. Like your dad might have been a little bit mean about it. Like he might've even, he might've been abusive, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I doubt that your dad was sunshine and roses when you told him that you were being sexually manipulated by cow. Because his right. dad doesn't even seem like the type who'd be like, oh, my poor son, I'm so sorry, and I'm going to call the police. Because he didn't. The dad didn't call the police. Yeah. So it's just not. And it's, it's that, too. It's like there was one small, like, little plot hole there where it was like, uh, 
So Nan's friend took Nan's phone and called Cow to say, hey, Nan is really drunk, we need someone to take him home. And Cow just being too nice, too fucking nice, agrees mm -hmm. to do this even after everything that's happened. He agrees that this is something that he should do. So he walks Cow home, or he walks not, so Cow walks not home, you know, Nan confesses, Cow's like, you know, thank you. And then they kind of tumble into the bed and that's when the dad walks in. And the story that Nan had spun was Cow had stalked him home and followed him into the house and then attacked him in his room, which doesn't make sense if they just pull up the phone records showing that Nan called him like fucking 20 minutes before the incident, you know? But anyways. Cal does nothing to defend himself. And that is the other thing that is awful. Like there is a line history between those two, multiple messages between those two, where you can see very clearly that Nan is hitting on Cal. Like yeah. the messages he sends him over line, you know, heart emojis and all this stuff, you can tell from the transcripts, this was a one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Cal doesn't do anything to defend his reputation other than just being like, it's not true. Again, grow a fucking backbone. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I don't like, I don't like Pete and Cal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this whole thing. I hate Nan, but Cal also is infuriating because he does nothing to protect himself. And also Pete, rawr, when Nan is standing outside of Cal's home after he has started the breakup between these two by dropping, by showing the cup, because Pete buys this personalized cup for Cal. Cal leaves it at a tutoring session. Nan is mad because he loses about a boy, which is this contest that him and Pete were in. So he gives Cal the cup in front of Pete and basically blows up the spot about the fact that Cal had continued to tutor Nan, even though Pete had said, do not tutor this boy anymore. So this causes him to split up. Pete at some point is like, you know what? I'm going to give Cal a second chance to explain things to me. I'm going to go to his house, talk to him. Nan is outside the house. Nan is like, I'm outside the house to have dinner with my boyfriend and his mom. And Pete believes it. Yeah. That was you have been going with this man for years at this point. Yeah. You know how deep in the closet he is. Why would you believe this shit, head? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know if it's because he's like, well, Cal lied to me about the tutoring. Maybe he's lying to me about this. But like, come on. You know he's not out to his mother. Mm -hmm. This kid is fucking lying. How could you not see that? Right. I, I was super disappointed in Pete. Like, again, another wow. reason why I didn't want these two to get back together. Mm -hmm. I was super disappointed in Pete because, like, you really must not know your boyfriend at all. No. I'm so angry. I'm so angry. And also, Cal, quit lending people your phone. All bad things happen when you lend people your phone. Quit lending people your phone. Yeah. I don't know why he so how did you feel about the way that the non-storyline was resolved? Um... I think it would have been nice to see Nan like actually get like a punishment, but they set up that his dad is like at le at the very least verbally abusive. So I'm okay with the dad just dragging him off and we never see him again because fucking good riddance. I didn't like the fact that Cal was only able to get himself out of the situation because his boyfriend made an Instagram live. Mm -hmm. Cause number one, again, I think that because they have such a power imbalance between the two, it's going to create some kind of a debitness that Cal's going to have for Pete. Mm -hmm. um, but also like, I don't know. I just feel like if I was Cal, I would have been like, yeah, even though this happened on Instagram Live, I still want you to call the police. I still want to actually legally clear my name. 
Mm-hmm. And that doesn't happen. And I'm like, that kind of sucks because, you know, the rumors are still there, even though they don't talk about it as much at the end of the show. I don't know that everyone and their grandmother watched that Instagram live to know right. that he was exonerated. Right. You know? So I, I don't know. I just, I wanted something a little bit firmer. Yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, non, he, he's, he was just a, he was a shitty shit, shit head brat, asshole, twerp, just the fucking worst. Non was the Sucks. fucking worst. Yeah, he sucks. And he proves the old adage that if you oppress your kids too much, they will become devious to get around your rules. Yeah. So I think that like a lot of his personality is really a response to his dad being super oppressive. Yeah. That, you know, he's like, okay, well, if I can't have things and be honest with my dad, then I'll lie to get the things that I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I really liked about the show was just the overall pacing of it. Um, like, fr- from the get-go, like, the show kind of had a hard task of acting as a standalone after, while using established characters. Like, neither of us saw the shows that came before this. We have only seen Dark Blue Kiss. I have not seen Kiss Me and Kiss Me Again. I don't know how they, I don't know how Cow and Pete got together. I don't know the story. And I didn't know this, didn't know how any of them were related to each other in any which way before this all started. But um, the first episode is perfect in the way that it establishes the who, what, where, when, and why of every character that is important and their relationship to each other. Mm. At least with the people that they will interact the most with. Like you get very and, clear. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You go. Well, okay. And without an exposition dump. No, it's not an exposition dump. It's all done through, it, they show, don't tell, which was great. There's no like voiceover like, and this is so-and-so, he's my best friend. Like there's none of that. It's just like, here's their relationships, here's their dynamic through examples, through example, which is great. Um, I love that, um, and I love just the overall pacing of the show. Um, there's a great setup and payoff for literally everything that happens. Everything is, it's almost too set up to where there's like not a lot of shockers, but I do think that everything that happens is at least set up and you can find evidence that it's going to happen later. And I feel like there's at least a decent payoff for everything. Maybe not the best option, but everything pays off in some way, which I like. Like the implant with the cup, all of that stuff was good. The whole like, you know, six episodes before, Nan sees the sees Cal putting in his password. So when he needs to break into his phone, he already knows the password. Like even little things had a good setup and payoff. Um, I especially liked the little touch of like character growth in objects, um, and by objects, I mean the blue Pete cow cup with their relationship. Whenever um, Cow was using that, he always had a black sleeve over it. So you couldn't see that their names were like lovingly inscribed on it. But then in the last episode when they were out and together, that sleeve was off and he was proudly carrying it around. I thought just things like that were really great. And overall, um, most boys loves just have these weird, like if they're 12 episodes, episode 11 will be some weird bullshit. It's just gonna come, some conflict will come rearing its head out of nowhere and like being like, hello, I am the conflict. And you're like, what? But this one, that happens in episode nine. Everything is built up to a climax that hits in episode nine and things just go downhill for these characters more and more and more. And then at the end of episode 11 slash beginning of episode 12 was when things get resolved. And that is great. They pace the show well. They explain all the characters very well. Everyone's in, everyone is very relatable in maybe even unfun ways. You might be like, hmm, I can see that in me and I do not like that. Um, but everyone is fairly realistic, fairly consistent in their character choices, why they do things. It was just, it's just solid. Like the storytelling is solid. I was just happy that there's no like bullshit, like ex lover coming back in last minute to provide conflict, like in together, you know? Yeah. 
I definitely agree with you about like the crescendo of the crescendo of the conflict between the couple not being a last minute throwaway. Like they didn't pull why are you where it's like, oh, my dad doesn't like it. You know, yeah. <laughs> they definitely they built it up and they made it. They definitely established, even in episode one, that there was a power imbalance between Pete and Cal from the very beginning. The fact that he's like, oh, I gotta hurry up and finish my tutoring because he's waiting on me at the pool. You already know what's going on between these two. Right. And so, like, I really appreciated that aspect of this show in that it let you know all along there were cracks in the facade. There's, yeah. there's problems with the foundation. So, I mean, whoever wrote this, I would love to see you do another boys love with a mm -hmm. fresh couple. Um, I would love to see you just sprinkle your magic on something new because yeah. everybody really played their roles very well and their roles were very real, well written. And there was no one here who just seems like they came out of nowhere and had nothing to do with the story and they were just extraneous or here to be like, you know, oh, this is the conflict. This one walking human being is a conflict. Yeah. It was like everybody had their reasons for everything that they did, which right. was beautiful. Like the only <laughs> character that honestly I could have done without was Sandy's boyfriend because he did literally nothing for this oh, show. Oh yeah, I forgot about him until he speaks. Then I'm like, oh, he exists. Yeah, like the one friend, June, he's funny. Yeah. And, you know, Sandy, of course, we love her because she's kind of like the spiritual guide of the group. But her boyfriend is a fucking bump on a log. Yeah. Get him there, out of here. He was there because they needed, like, another person. They needed another body. I just hated that, like, she's so dynamic and her boyfriend is such a fucking tool. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. Um, I think that they almost did... There was actually a time when I watched it the first time that I thought they were going to make Kitty, like, the annoying, like, ex-girlfriend character that comes in out of nowhere for no reason. But mm -hmm. they didn't. And turns out, she's a lesbian now. And I was like, yeah! <laughs> yeah. It's like, this show got good. <laughs> yes, and, and like, Kitty's <laughs> Yuri from Why, Why, Why! And it was yes. so fun to see her. Mm -hmm. Yes. It Our universes are very small. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like to see um, um, just a but Yeah, I think this is a great show for people to rewatch. Um, I think that definitely when it's not under the shadow of Tharn type, this is absolutely a series that stands alone. Mm -hmm. And I would put it, if, if we were doing a top five, before we give our ratings for the show, if we were doing a top five of Thai boys love, not overall, just Thai boys love, mm -hmm. definitely for me, like, it's Sodas. It's Dark Blue Kiss. It's My Engineer. Um, I might would throw in Make It Right Season 2, but that's just because of me. Mm. And... Sodas S! <laughs> <laughs> Sodas S, the Sodas episode of Our Sky. Uh. <laughs> yeah, those are all separate things, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, I would love to put in Tharn Type, but there's still a lot of problems with Tharn Type. But definitely, like, Sodas and Sodas S, to me, are practically untouchable. My mm. Engineer, I mean, we've gushed about that show tremendously already. Dark Blue Kiss, just for what it says about communication and sustained relationships, absolutely. So yeah. I, I feel very comfortable in those. And then Make It Right 2, only because, like, you know what a fanatic I am for Ohm. And Ohm Tui, in that particular show, mm -hmm. they make that entire series for me. Right. I would agree. I would say Dark Blue Kiss is probably one of my favorite boys' loves, especially Thai boys' loves, especially after the rewatch. Um, I feel like it's one of those shows where it does have problems, but it doesn't have enough to where I'm super annoyed by them. Kind of like, uh, like Beauty and the Beast, I think, is a good example, where it's like, sure, there's problems in the story. You know, people are like, well, if the Beast was cursed at 21, and then seven years later, he's still 21. They don't answer that. It's like, yeah, that's kind of weird that they didn't address that. But like, it's not a big enough like idea where I really give a shit and it doesn't really affect the overall impact of the story. It's just sort of like a weird contrivance that's like, eh, whatever. And I feel like that's the show. Like, there's no like huge gaping plot holes. Nothing really comes out of nowhere. Um, everything's built up. Everything's explained. And it somewhat said, and at least a, in, in my opinion, a fairly satisfactory way. So I feel like I can really forgive any of the like 
negatives about this show and still really enjoy it. Whereas I feel like Tharn Type is definitely a guilty pleasure show. Like, yes. it's really good when you're watching it, but then when you think about it, you're like, that's kind of fucked up. So. Yeah. Like, Tharn Type is like a video on Pornhub that has a very dubious title, but like, if you watch it, it's not that bad. But uh-huh. if you just see it in the list of videos, you're like, hmm, Master <laughs> Bunny, Slutty Slave, this doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah. I really am glad we we did Dark Blue Kiss. It was like, it was a busy work week, but it was nice to watch this. It was good. I'm glad. So ratings, I'm going to give my rating off the bat. Please don't be mad at me because I'm doing the best that I can here. Okay. An eight? Yeah. Eight and a half. And a half. Okay. Yeah. Let me give it a nine. Woo! Yeah. I, I really liked the show. I thought it was really, really great. And I would like to rewatch it again, you know, which I think is a good sign, you know? Like, I'm yeah. like, man, I should rewatch I mean, this again. <laughs> I would have given it higher marks if I actually liked Pete and Cal as a couple. The fact yeah. that I don't like them as a couple is what really drug down my personal score mm-hmm. because I just don't like to see flaw. I don't like to see bad guys win. And in a lot of ways, I still feel like Pete won a victory that he wasn't entitled to. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I like them. It- I'm by me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I cannot wait till we watch Three Will Be Free. We can't do that now because that's just too much work. But when when you aren't as busy at work, that's when we will watch Three Will Be Free because I have a feeling that when we watch that, we will have a lot to talk about. It sounds like a trip. Not, not I a mean, good trip, but it sounds like a trip. We're talking throuples. We're talking trans. We're talking mafia shit. Like, it's you know, sex work and, you know, the way that society judges sex work. Like, there's a lot going on in this show. Sounds like Three Will Be Three will be a three-part episode. Uh, that, that, was, that was a pun in my head, but it's not that funny. If you guys can't tell, I'm not a funny person, so. Mason is great. <laughs> he just, he, he really downs himself more than he deserves. He's don't actually out me like this. Don't out me like this on the internet. I would never have done this show with anybody else in our friends group beside you. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean it. I love you. I love you too. I can't really? wait to I can't wait to hang out. Me too. It's going to be great. I have to like figure out what I can gift you to take home with you that I can get rid of. I I was like, you don't have to get me anything, but you're like, to get rid of. And I'm like, I mean, I'll help you, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, because like, real talk, I'm I'm trying to downsize a little bit. So if I can maybe put some things in your luggage before you go home, that would be amazing. Uh, Sure, I'll take a look at your K-pop collection. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right, so Instagram of the day. Instagram of the day. Instagram of the day. Yay! Instagram of the day is a person that we have already established that none of us like. However, I still wanted to use, I still wanted them to be the Instagram of the day because I felt like they deserve because they're just interesting. Like their whole life setup is interesting to me. So my Instagram of the day is the letter A, the letter J, underscore C H A Y A P O L. So if you didn't catch it, it's A J underscore. Chayapol, and he plays Nan in Dark Blue Kiss. I love this kid. <laughs> you know, I'm always surprised at who you pick each week, because this week I was like, maybe she'll pick, like, the guy who played Sun, because he's really cute, and he has, like, an Instagram sandwich like where he posts a lot of his own photos. But no, you pick fucking Nan? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Fuck you. I, I <laughs> you, you should have picked the twin and confused everyone. Well, that's the reason why I picked him because 
if you didn't know, AJ is a twin. It's AJ and JJ. And they are twin actors under GMM TV. Um, early on in their career, they played twins in a lot of different shows, like they were always together. But in recent years, they started to do things apart. And I feel like Mason, now that you've had a chance to rewatch it, do you feel like you can tell the difference between the twins now? Yes, but not in like a good way. If you know well, what I mean. I mean Huh? I understand that it's not in a good way, but now you can absolutely tell just kind of like by their faces, like who's who. But, yeah. but he's a twin. And that's why I encourage you to follow him because he has lots of really cute pictures of him and his twin together on his Instagram. Him and his twin also have a travel show that they did recently. So that is something that I think GMMTV is going to be either broadcasting or have already broadcast. Um, also, AJ is a long time player in the boys love game, even though I believe that this is his first um, attempt at being in a romantic situation in terms of boys love, but he and his brother have both played like background characters in a ton of different boys love shows. So keep your eye on him because he's definitely got more going on. I, am, I expect to see a lot more stuff from him in the future. His mm -hmm. brother, the same, more stuff from them in the future. So like, if it was one of those things where like invest early, if we were talking about the stock market, follow him, invest early. Because I really think that if him and his brother both decide that acting is what they want to focus their efforts on, they have a lot of potential. I mean, just the fact that we hate not as much as he did shows that AJ did his job. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes on him. Yeah. And the brother JJ was in um, Together. He was one of types, or not Tyne's friends, sorry. Yes, and he was a good friend in Together. He was the social media friend, mm -hmm. and I really liked him, and he has a very pleasant face. Even though they're twins, and they're identical twins, you can actually tell them apart, which is kind of interesting. They have different auras. Like, they give yeah. off a different vibe, and that's how you can tell them apart. Yeah, definitely JJ is the more placid of the two. Mm-hmm, Yeah. But yeah, that's my Instagram of the day. What is your manga of the day? I'm reading so much illicit manga on mangago.me. <laughs> Mine is um, not a very illicit one. It is called False Memory. Oops, I can't see it well. Well, this is what I do when I use natural lighting. Shit gets weird. <laughs> okay, how are we gonna do this? False Memories. Uh, okay, I see it. It is by... Isaku Natsume, who did Candy Color Paradox, which is the series I recommended a few episodes ago. I think this is her, like, one of her first published, published series. It came before Candy Color Paradox. And I will say, it's not as good, but it's still good. It's about, it's another one where it's, like, actual adults in a relationship. Um, it's about Suda and, Nak and Nakano and how they have a business relationship. And that they used to be, it's a similar premise to um, the one I did last week, which I believe was Escape Journey, where it's like they used to kind of have a thing, and then they weren't together for a while, and then they meet up in the real world. So it's a similar premise. They meet up in the real world, um, and it's about how they get back together. And I think it's, it's very sweet. It's, it's got a nice, happy ending. It's only two volumes. I just really like these characters. They're really cute. There's no, there's not a lot of super weird shit or super problematic shit going on. Um, it's just a solid two volume story that if you're like, I need something good to read. I need to feel a little just invested in something. I need to feel some happiness today. This is a good book. This is a good read. And if the art's pretty okay. So, I like yeah. it. I was going to try to read, um, some of your recommendations on an illegal website uh -huh. and uh i got distracted looking for them because i ended up reading bj alex uh-huh and i shouldn't have done that i should not okay. have done that i i could not do anything else when i got home from work besides read bj alex for two days <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's, it's bad. Like it's, it is the kind of, it is like Tharn type levels of like inappropriate, but at the same time, I was completely hooked, could not look away. And so I, I, 
I feel like I I need to stop now because I am currently reading a boys love manga called Love is an Illusion. Mm -hmm. And it's an alpha omega manga and it is very poorly drawn, but I just cannot turn away. You have ruined me. I feel like I did the first time I started reading stories on Asianfanfics.com. Like once the door is open, you cannot close it. Mm -hmm. So please support the legal means of watching and reading these things. A lot of this stuff is online and you can pay for it. But then, you know, there are books that are printed and it's definitely a good idea to kick money back to these authors and artists and stuff like that. Because if people can't make money doing this, they're not going to do it anymore. Right. I'm glad you're starting to read more manga. This, this gets me closer to getting you to watch Given. So I hate it. It's, awful i just okay so the ones i've been reading are korean like they are uh -oh. i guess they're manhwas. okay and, and i guess in korea you're not allowed to show genitals instead it's just like a white space covered in like dew drops yeah that that's manga too yeah and it is it is very disturbing because people are ultra specific about these blank spaces that they leave in their pictures. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like, I, I feel like this is too much. I feel like this is too much. Please, let's pull back on this. Like, literally the one I'm reading now, <sighs> kind of like Journey in the Butthole. Uh, they're trying to show that, <laughs> they're trying to show that this man's genital is really long, and that it goes a very long way in this other gentleman's anal canal. And so, like, there's a very fleshy exterior and then a glowing white beam in the middle. And it's just like, please stop. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. <laughs> next panel, next panel. <laughs> <laughs> why why do people draw that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> who who is it that told the author like you know it'd be really hot <laughs> if we saw just how far that dick went <laughs> yeah you know it'd be really hot if you could show the intestinal lining people love the inside of colons no no they don't who are the nasty people who want this gross get away from me i truly hope the, the dude douched before. Otherwise, <laughs> covered. Oh, gosh. It's just, it's awful. It's awful. So thank you for ruining my life. I appreciate it. <laughs> watch Given. It's wholesome. I, I will watch it. I gotta figure out where to find it, but I'll watch it. I never said I wouldn't. The only thing that I have been hesitant about watching has been uh, Scum. That's the only thing I've been hesitant about watching. Yeah, but I've not. Like but I've. When you've asked me if I would watch it, I totally said I would. I just need to find out where to watch it. Oh, I can send you. I can send you links to it. Um, yeah, send me links. But yeah, anytime you've asked me, I've always said, "Yeah, I'll do that if that's what we want to do." Is that what we're doing next week? Because we need to have that conversation. I think that the last episode we all said that we were probably going to try to do because of you and where your eyes linger next week. But I don't know if that still works out for you, Mason. So let me know. Are we doing given next week? Or are we doing because of you where your eyes linger. I can do either or. Um, I don't think I'll have the time to like rewatch like a long show. So, and like given I watched so recently that I really wouldn't need a rewatch. Also the manga is the exact same and I can just read the manga if I need to catch anything. Yeah. Um, so I feel like given would be a good option, but I also know that where their eyes linger is like an hour and a half total. Like all the episodes put together is like an hour and a half. So I can do that too. Okay, and then because of you, you've already watched before, and I think it's about the same length. So it's about it's about like watching two movies. Yeah. Because, because yeah, because of you it was a web series, and I think it was the same like eight episodes, ten minutes each, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what should we do? I don't know. It's up to you. <sighs> I haven't watched the last two episodes of Where Your Eyes Linger, but I've already been spoiled in terms of knowing it has a happy ending, which uh -huh. is a new thing for Korean boys love mm -hmm. and I feel like it would be a good idea to talk about it also because it's still kind of in the current zeitgeist it's something that okay. people are currently talking about so 
I would go with because of you where your eyes linger. And then the week after that, do you want to do given? Yeah. I feel like I'm like bursting to talk about given, but I like, I'm also, I also work in animation. So I have like a lot to say. <laughs> do we have to have a therapy session? Don't give away your power if you have an opinion about a situation. What do you mean? Like, if you really want to talk about given, don't be like, I don't know, it's your choice. When you are <laughs> bursting to talk about given. <laughs> don't be that girl who orders a salad when you really want a steak. <laughs> but sometimes you gotta eat a salad even if you want a steak. Yes, but if you're being offered both, go with what you want. <laughs> So where the eyes linger because of you next week. Okay. <laughs> or maybe we should just do where their eyes linger. Maybe we should just. I mean, we could, but we would have a really short episode. I mean, because, okay. like I said, I've watched episodes one through six. There's not a lot to talk about. There is a lot of blank space. It is very much the Asian style of cinema where, like, glances and illicit touching mm -hmm. is is more than dialogue and plot. Right. So, I mean, if we do that, there's less to talk about with that show than there even was with Why, Why, Why. Mm-hmm. So, it's up to you. Okay, if no, we can do it by both. itself. I just it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be super short. All yeah. right. Okay, well, we'll see you all next week. Um, mm -hmm. We will be watching Because of You and Where Your Eyes Linger on Vicky. Vicky is the legal website slash retailer, I guess, for us to watch these things in America. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for it, that's where you need to go. A lot of people who are reviewing Why Are You or Where Your Eyes Linger have had their videos taken down when they've had clips from the show in them. So yeah, it's one of those things where please be very careful about where you watch because anybody who's able to upload the entire series is probably not a legal place to watch it. And when you right. go to watch it there, you're going to have a lot of pop-ups and viruses in those websites. Right. For Because of You, I do think the official version is on YouTube. Like yeah. a lot of other boys love. Mm -hmm. So that one's easy to watch. It's like six minutes an episode. So Yeah, it's really quick. Yeah. The gay brothers. Good. Yay. Thank you guys for watching. We had a really good time. I love talking to you all. And, you know, join us again next week. Mm -hmm. All right. Adios.